Yes, brother. Mic one. Assalamualaikum, Zakir Bhai. I've been introduced to you by my sir, uh, Nasir Sir Guru, who is a teacher by profession. And uh, the first time I heard you was at uh, Azad Maidan, and uh, the topic was uh, similarities between Hinduism and Islam. My name is Dipen Seth, and I'm working with a construction company. I have come across an argument by my fellow friends when we have discussed about uh, these topics, and uh, the question is that when the Mughals were there. they have tempered with the hindu scriptures and that's the reason we find uh, you know there's some references and things like that in the scriptures is it a myth or a reality please throw some light on it thank you brother that's a very good question that when the moguls came to india they tempered with the hindu scriptures is it a myth or is it a reality the as far as my study goes it is a myth there are some things what the hindu said did come into the scripture for example the word hindu the word hindu doesn't exist in any of the hindu scriptures before the arabs came to india hindu is actually a geographical definition the word hindu was first used by the arabs when they came to india they say hindi hindi even now today when i go to saudi they call me hindi hindi i I'm a Hindi. Hindi means it's a geographical definition for people living in the land of the Indus Valley. It's not a religious definition. That's the reason Jawaharlal Nehru says the word Hindu does not appear in the Hindu scriptures until the Arabs came to India. But regarding a question, the Mughals tampered with the Hindu scriptures. Point number one. As far as my study goes, the Mughals did not tamper with Hindu scriptures. Fine. Now, even if I agree with you that the Mughals tempered, now once they have tempered, you leave that scripture now. If you agree that the scripture has tempered, so leave it now. What are you going to follow? A tempered scripture? Follow a scripture which is not tempered. Quran. So even if I agree with your argument that Mughals have tempered the scripture, now leave that scripture. Suppose you have a glass, two glasses of water. One glass is pure. in the other glass someone puts one drop of one drop of gutter water is in front of you but once it mixes you can't make out the dirt will you have the glass of water no why you can't see it but because you saw dirty black color drop it falls in the glass of water it mixes you can't make out will you have it will you have the glass of water once i've seen it i won't have correct very good because you're logical So even if I agree with you that Moses have tempered the scripture, leave that scripture. Have the pure scripture, Quran. And if you say they have not tempered, your the Hindu scripture says you have to follow the Quran. Hindu scripture says that you have to follow Prophet Muhammad peace be. If they have not tempered, if they have tempered, leave it. Follow this. If they have tempered, the scripture says that you have to believe in one God, which I give quotation. Besides giving quotation of God, that scripture also says. that you have to follow the last and final message of prophet muhammad peace be upon him i can give you quotations from the hindu scriptures talking about the coming of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you read the hindu scripture bhavishya purana parva 3 khanda 3 adhyaya 3 shlokas 5 to 8 it talks about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam bhavishya purana parva 3 khanda 3 adhyaya 3 shlokas 10 to 27 talk about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you read the kuntap suktas atharva ved book number 20 hymn number 127 verse number 1 to 14 talk about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam If you read Atharva Ved, book number twenty, hymn number twenty-one, verse number six. Atharva Ved, book number twenty, hymn number twenty-one, verse number seven. Talk about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number fifty-nine, verse number six, hymn number fifty-three, verse number nine. It talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read the Psalm Ved, Agni, mantra number sixty-four, talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned by name. He is called as Ahmad, the one who praises in Psalm Ved. Uttarchik mantra number 1500 in in Samved Indra chapter number two mantra number 152 in uh, Yajurved chapter number 31 verse number eight in Rigved book number eight hymn number six mantra number ten in Atharvaved book number eight hymn number five mantra number sixteen Atharvaved book number twenty hymn number 124 mantra number fourteen he is even mentioned by name as Muhammad he is called as Narashansa Narashansa means Nar means man. 
shansa means prashansa praise one who is worth praising the praiseworthy if you translate nara shansa into arabic it becomes muhammad he is mentioned by name muhammad as nara shansa in several places rigved book number 1 hymn number 13 verse number 3 rigved book number 1 hymn number 18 mantra number 9 rigved book number 1 hymn number 106 mantra number 4 uh, rigved book number 1 him number 142 mantra number 3 rigved book number 2 him number 3 mantra number 2 rigved book number 5 him number 2 mantra number 2 rigved book number 7 him number 2 mantra number 2 rigved book number 10 him number 184 mantra number 3 yajurve chap number 21 verse number 37 yajurve chap number 21 verse number 31 yajurve chap number 21 verse number 51 yajurve chap number 20 verse number 37 yajurve chap number 20 verse number 57 yajurve chap number 28 verse number 2 yajurve chap number 20 verse number 19 yajurve chap number 20 verse number 42 i can keep on quoting only references of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the scriptures so your scriptures say that prophet that there's one god you worship him alone and you have to follow the last and final messenger even when the scriptures speak about the kalki avatar about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the last and final messenger it says his mother's name will be sumati that's amina the name of our muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mother it says his father's name will be vishnu yas servant of god abdullah which is the name of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam father it says he will be born in sambala a place of peace that is makka he'll be born in the place in the family of the chief of makka and you know in the family of quraish he left four companions talking of the sahaba i can go on and on and on talking about this kalki avatar he will come he'll be the last messenger that is prophet muhammad peace be upon him i am asking you brother do you believe in one god yeah do you believe that there's no idol worship yeah i don't believe in idol worship after i heard uh, your speech at azad maidan so you know i'm very clear in all those aspects and i've heard you a lot of times so i just had a question which was posed to me and i wanted an answer for that so wanted to hear that so. do you believe that prophet muhammad is the last and final messenger yeah i do believe in la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah mashallah so. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah. So that is very clear and uh, Mashallah I thank you, you thank you from the bottom of my heart that you doing such a good work and you're clearing all these misconceptions that we all people do have. Mashallah reward you brother and in Islam in Islamic world if you submit your will a person is called as a muslim. Yes, exactly so when will. exactly sir sorry to interrupt you but that's the reason when people ask me who uh, what's your religion and uh, you know i speak gujarati and when they tell me what's your religion i just uh, when i heard you that uh, you know the definition of a muslim is bo- the person who will bows his will to allah subhanahu wa taala and that's what i told him that you know i am a muslim so he was like shocked so the I'm reason why he was shocked is that i i speak gujarati i know where uh, you know i am a muslim or something or you know come from a muslim background family So I was like, I'm born in whichever family it is, but then I know what is right, and I've just studied that, and that's what I talk about, and I preach about, and I just try to do my bit in the small pieces and bits that I can do. So thank, thank you, you sir. Really thank you, sir. And I thank you, and may Almighty God grant you Jannah. And if you require any query, any question, the most welcome to contact us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. May we have the next question from the mic in the center, the joint section. We have time only for uh, uh, one or two more questions, or seven minutes before we.